Am I appreciating? You bet I am. It's Brett, a.k.a. PQ Ribber here. Uh, Once again, I I am the appreciator. And we're rolling over. This is uh, episode 11 of this ongoing series, and we're just zipping along here. Um, And the, the interesting thing about this show is there's really nothing up to date topical news that. Uh, you know, if if you listen to a show from a month ago or two months ago, even though there are no such things, we've only been doing this for about two weeks now. Um, it it does. It, you can go back. There's no like. It's not going to sound dated. I'm not going to be talking about the Vietnam War and President Nixon. Or you know, we're just we're here with uh, entertainium and upbeat stuff and. Uh, Things we can all have fun with and appreciate because you too can be an appreciator. There's no exclusivity. It isn't uh, special. And, and, and if all of us talked more about the things we like and appreciate and you know, avoided this, like, I don't like that. Yeah, I mean, it's okay to, like, as an aside... Uh, express a preference but to go on and on about something that perhaps somebody else feels or likes or uh, is into it, it, it's just being a nudnik it, it, it's it, you're being so negative but anyways um, I say that because uh, we our mystery listener who leaves comments over at onsug.com on my posts has uh once again, uh, left us uh, a the unappreciator, uh, the, the mysterious unappreciators left another uh, comment, and uh, it's you know, three paragraphs. So let's see uh, what they have to say. Uh, that the second episode is probably one of the more unique ones because uh, I had the, the the privilege to interview. The band Midnight Express, who were playing at Ingo's a couple Fridays ago, and uh, they were nice enough to talk with me. So uh, here is the comment: uh, I love how you phrase the question. What? Where would you say you are from? Not where were you born or where are you from, but something that addresses the transient nature of life nowadays. I haven't lived in my hometown of El Paso for over half my life now, and I wouldn't recognize it if I went back. I'm starting to feel like I'm not from there anymore. And uh, yeah, that's true. I don't, you know, my hometown, yes, I spent a lot of years there, but it's an alien place to me. It's not what it was and that's fine things change and nowadays faster than ever all that you know your downtown business district is now empty and there's malls and buildings and places you used to go to are gone and other stuff has gone up and there's other people and the world moves on i mean if i left a lot of other people left in fact when i graduated high school it was like my whole high school class just took off for florida and many of them remain there to this very day many years later continuing the comment i was working on an especially frustrating part of a photography project that's supposed to be my fun hobby last night that i was listening when the guest guy said if you're not having fun lower your expectations i felt like he was talking right to me and me too that is a great line to uh that that should be a t-shirt really um if you're not having fun lower your expectations because yeah fun is important it's not some extra bonus you can make almost anything fun if you take a breath and look at some of the things you might be doing otherwise i mean I'm having fun right now. I wouldn't be doing these programs if I weren't having a great time yakking into this microphone with the anticipation of comments like this and listeners like you. Uh, Continuing, it's funny to hear Las Cruces referred to as the big city down the road. 
things must have changed a lot. Back in the 80s, Las Cruces was anything but big. And yes, I've heard that. It was just kind of a sleepy little retirement community with a university. And now it's a sprawl of malls and uh, at least the central downtown area. When I was there with the liminaries a couple weeks ago, it was hopping and happening that the brewery was going, all the stores had people, and there was a street flea market the street was closed down and there was an antique car show with people just all these classic cars lined up in the streets oh, great fun and um yeah not not a sleepy little new mexico town anymore and uh, uh unappreciator keep them coming i appreciate your listening and taking the time to uh comment and you too. I mean, I'm not, you oughta. But if you feel like commenting, by all means, um, on our Facebook page, uh, the Overnight Scape Underground Facebook page, where I also post and uh, get comments on these shows, um, uh, Anna Ertman, Anna Ertman, not Anna, uh, has requested more Jimbo, please. And, uh, the next show in this series, I will certainly continue to uh, appreciate Jimbo because he was really a magical presence on the Overnight Scape Underground, and I miss him very much. He passed on in, uh, I think, 2018, and it, it, he left a void in my podcasting, listening, and participation that... Uh, it's going to be hard. To, it, it hasn't been replaced, uh, but we keep going nonetheless, and we think about him. And Jimbo was, as I've mentioned, uh, one of the world's biggest fans of an old-time radio show called Vic and Sade. And just recently, in fact, within the last few days, I uh, had the pleasure through uh, an old-time radio dealer named Ted Davenport. You can find him on Facebook. That's Ted Davenport. And I normally, I, I appreciate Ted Davenport. He is now posting all sorts of complete sets, not just an MP3, in lossless flack format and just putting them out there and um, asking that you donate. So it's like a pay what you will sort of situation, including paying nothing. And uh, I am going, in honor of Jimbo and in honor of the incredible Vic and Sade series, uh, going to include some Vic and Sade right here on uh, a soon-to-come episode of The Appreciator, because that's what we do here. And uh, if you have any ideas, I mean, we do have the limit that I am uh, doing these around half hour, and I don't want to get too sprawly on that unless it's something really epic and amazing. Uh, I may go do some special extra long episodes as a side thing, but the Appreciator series itself, I'm sure most people appreciate that it's not too long and uh, I figure a half hour is enough of me and having to listen to me at one time so yeah 30 minutes 32 minutes you know somewhere in there uh, is what the plan is as we go forward and like I say this is only the 11th episode of who knows how many and the fun is happening and um, yeah that that's comments I really I mean Chad Bowers is loving the show, and I definitely have to include one of his monologues soon because, well, you can, as I told you before, his uh, YouTube channel, The Incredible True Facts of Space, and he also does a series of podcasts uh, sporadically on the Overnight Scape Underground called The Chad Cast, and, and the absurdist humor and brilliant writing and delivery you, you should check those out especially his youtube channel because it has more shorter bite-sized segments uh that 
will make you laugh and think, and they bear repeating. It's not like you're going to listen to it once and get all the little nuances. Uh, some of those things, it's like fire sign theater. You can listen to them uh, several times and find new little funny things and clever things. And yeah, you want to check that out as well. And uh, I do have uh, some outside segment again this time on The Appreciator because. Uh, on and off, I've used segments, and uh, unsug host Shambles Constant is also a fan of a fellow by the name of Bob Lassiter, who um, passed on some years ago, but before he did, he is one of the people who inspired me to talk on the radio. He did a talk radio show, mostly in Florida, and... He not only took calls, but he would do these monologues. And uh, one of his favorite topics was the Bible and uh, the way certain people interpret it. And uh, I have a segment here from one of his uh, Florida shows. Uh, It's not very long. And uh, I'm going to give you a taste of, uh, he was known as also the Mad dog and uh, this is uh, a caller calling into his show about a bible quiz hello 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 yeah yes it is how about your biblical questions oh you'd like to take the biblical quiz well i would like to and again like i said last night i'd like to donate a hundred dollars if we win to the little girl survive the airplane crash okay great great um Okay, let's, uh, you familiar with the book of Genesis? Uh, a little bit. Okay, was the entire earth covered with water? Was the entire earth covered with water? Uh Uh-huh. In what era are you talking? The book of Genesis. Yes, it was covered with water. Oh, gosh darn, that would have been right if we were talking about the first chapter, but according to the second chapter... Uh, you're a uh big asshole. Really? You know that? You well, because you can't answer the, the questions. I'm an asshole I because you can't answer the questions. I just asked you what era of oh, the first chapter, the second chapter. You're a big... Oh, really? Because your book contradicts itself? I'm an ass. I see. Well, that's an interesting concept. It contradicts itself? Oh, but it does. Because the book doesn't contradict... Ask me another question. Let's okay. see how close we come. All right. Uh, would you agree with this, that the trees brought uh, were brought forth before man was created? Would I agree with the two what now? Were trees around before man was around? Was trees around before yes, man? Yes, were the around. trees created before man? Yes, definitely. Oh, I'm gosh darn, good. there you go. You're wrong again. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Because according to, to Genesis, according to Genesis 2, 7, trees were made after man. Well, you know, let me tell you something. I asked you, what chapter do you want to refer to? We're talking about the book of Genesis. I, you know, I'm... Well, can't help it if you're not familiar that, with it. In chapter 2, it says yes or no. I beg your pardon? What was that? In, in book of Genesis, in 2, it says yes or no. In 2, it says trees were made after man. Okay, it says after. Mm-hmm. Where in Genesis does it say the opposite? Uh, Genesis 1.11. Uh, 1.11. Read it uh, to me. Oh, okay, I'd be delighted to. Huh. Your book is flawed, so I'm an asshole. That makes a great deal of sense. Why do you say it's in Bible? Okay, then God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it according to their various kinds, etc., etc., etc. But unfortunately, you see, in chapter 1, you have to get to uh, verse 26 before man is created. Darn. See, man was created after. So the trees were made on the, uh, what? see uh, here that would be i guess the second day or maybe the third but man wasn't made until the that's last exactly day. what i said i said they were there prior to man well yes but unfortunately we were going by chapter two which says the opposite <laughs> Gee, would you like another one go ahead bob go ahead okay was man created before or after the beast was man created before or after the beast let me mm-hmm. ask you this what chapter are you referring to? I just asked you a simple question. Was man made before or after the beast? I say he was made after the beast. Darn. 
Sorry about that. In Chapter 2, man was made before the beast. Oh, but... You're still stuck on Chapter 1. You know, you, you, you know, I asked you what chapter you're referring to, what era you're referring to. You can't give me them. Sure I can. I give you, I give you, I, I, beg, I beg your pardon, I give you chapter and verse with the answer. If I was, if I was to say you, he was made before the beast, he was just, oh, but it says this over here. And it's just that. That's other. right. That's the whole point, you see? You're still an asshole, Bob Lasseter. Oh, okay. Big, big. They ruined the good teeth when they... May I ask you a question? They ruined the good ass when they put teeth in your mouth. Yeah, let May me ask you a question. Why do you... I don't, know if I, I, don't, I don't know if I'll answer it, but let me tell you before you ask, okay? Uh, no, sir, this is my program. We do it my way. The reason why I'm Okay, there you go. go. WPLP, you're on the air. Hello? Hello? Bob? Yeah. Hello, Bob? Yes. I wake up every morning. Great. Yeah, Florida, especially the Tampa market, was a hotbed of really uh, and, and you notice they uh, I hope you weren't too offended by the uh, a-hole word being used uh, that many times but uh, if, if this is marked not for kids I mean I it's, I don't think there's anything on any of my shows that would harm children but if you that, that's another thing that's really weird about YouTube if you say that it could be appropriate for children under 13. It's like they lock down the comments on your videos. You can't favorite them. I don't even, I guess you can subscribe. It's just, why? Why? Um, why, Google? Why? Uh, I, I don't completely unappreciate that, but why? Why are you doing that to us, us nice people who are trying to um, enjoy stuff, enjoy life, and um, it just, oh man. Anyways, um, moving right along here. Uh, somebody who probably doesn't get as much appreciation as they used to, but deserves vast amounts, uh, is a fellow by the name of Buddy Holly. Um, it, I guess in the 80s, he had a sort of renaissance. He was probably the first rock and roller. I mean, he was back in the Elvis era, but of course, Elvis didn't write his own songs or, you know, form his own bands. He had a manager. He was a guy with a great voice and a great sensibility. And what a performer. I am not knocking Elvis Presley in any way, shape, or form, especially the early days. That sun era of Elvis Presley is highly appreciated and recommended. I mean, even if you don't like the later Elvis, the 60s movies Elvis, or the 70s uh, kind of puffy Elvis, um, that 50s Elvis was just so iconic and especially the sun sessions but even his early uh recordings for the rca label are just awesome rock and roll but buddy holly who was a contemporary pretty much wrote his own songs and started off with his band the crickets and uh, just actually when he passed in that infamous plane crash that the song american pie was about that's another forgotten piece of uh americana the don mclean song american pie um buddy holly up it was starting to produce other artists and expand and yeah there was a sign that they were defanging him because some of his later recordings had these string sections and lush orchestrations and weren't very rock and rolling but he was still at his death he was out on the road playing rock and roll so there's that it's hard to say where he would have gone but he recorded oh the perhaps only two or three albums worth of material uh on his own and with his band and there are so many great songs that have been covered by so many people uh, it, that'll be the day true love ways there's just you know, off the top of my head, I can't think of any, but there are so many Buddy Holly tributes, but lately, 
Well, time is moving on. I mean, even Elvis Presley, who was iconic. I mean, everywhere there were velvet paintings of Elvis. And then now uh, the younger people, I think, are not exposed, are not familiar. And there's nothing wrong with that because today's music really isn't the same sort of thing. But if you haven't heard of Buddy Holly or you haven't heard Buddy Holly's stuff, um, this is something I believe uh, would, if you like the rock and roll, he is going to enjoy. Uh, you are going to enjoy him. And uh, I'm now going to recommend uh, a podcaster and a podcast that is from years ago, probably 10 years ago now. And this podcast was called The Golden Age Superman Podcast. And its main host was a man by the name of John Wilson. Now, John Wilson, he's got a great voice. He's great delivery he has been and it was much more one of my favorite podcasters i don't know some years ago when things started polarizing around what 2016 or so uh we had some silly um political disagreement and uh i think he was one of the first people that was the beginning of the the, like all of a sudden because you know it, it didn't matter that we love uh, old comics and comic books and had so many things in common that we didn't agree on a specific political that I don't even remember which specific political issue it was um, he blocked me on Facebook oh so he could never see my posts and I couldn't reply to him ever again i mean what what is that especially when it's you know if it's some stranger yeah okay you want to get somebody out of your hair but doing it to somebody who is a colleague it's just and i'm in these days i really am trying to rekindle my relations with people whom i may have had some sort of you know it's, it's not i don't even want to you know call out anybody because that's not right these things need to be resolved uh man to man uh maybe not face to face but uh message to message in in private and there's these people it's just like in the that somebody can't just contact somebody and apologize there has to be this whole public and do you have you bought one of these public apologies and and who is it to if two people have a beef why would it matter to me to know that one apologized and i have to listen to it or watch it um yeah and now i'm getting no i, I don't mean to bring us down here let's um continue to talk about this amazing golden age superman podcast because he really went all out he was reading the original action comics and then the superman comics that came shortly after and the superman of that time was just much more of a crusader who helped people uh in one of the first stories he takes somebody who is beating their wife into hand picks him up and he couldn't fly but he jumps up and he's threatening to drop the guy and it puts the scare into him and yes yeah, some of his methods are a little uh, over bullyish uh but and he goes up against big corporations and corrupt politicians like the first couple of years uh when jerry siegel was writing and joe schuster was at least the lead artist they used a lot of ghosts because suddenly it was a popular strip and uh, schuster just couldn't draw fast enough to keep up with the demand so um, that was there are many cases where ghosts jump in and there's nothing wrong with that as long as some integrity and then of course um, dc saw that, that they changed things around because 
they didn't want that controversy. And I suppose, you know, th- 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 there was a fear of like some sort of, a, you know, what is all this anti-corporate, anti-political uh, diatribe in our comic books? And that they smoothed it down, just like they smoothed down Batman, uh, just to digress for a second. I mean, Batman used to carry a gun. And if things got out of hand, he was not above bumping off a criminal to get them out of the way. And super. Superman, too. I think uh, uh, some were a little on the accidental side, but Superman wasn't above, uh, you know, somebody was bad enough. Oh, well, well, he fell, didn't he? Ooh, um, and I don't know. I appreciate that about Golden Age comics. And uh, that John Wilson would have other experts on Superman, and he would cover all the other Superman media. Uh, there was a Superman radio show and uh, Superman products. And that they're still out there. If you search John Wilson, Golden Age Superman podcast, I am certain you will find a repository because I think they're in a couple of places now. And uh, this is still something I very much appreciate. And there is something called, uh, as long as I'm talking about comic book podcasts, the Two True Freaks Network. And the Two True Freaks Network is uh, just full of pop culture. I mean, everything from Star Trek, Star Wars, comic books, music, movies, Uh, science fiction, all sorts of shows. And um, one of my favorites is one called Back to the Bins, where they talk about comics that they got from the dollar comic bin specifically. And that's, that's, comic books are supposed to be fun. Take them out of those bags and boards and just Put them in your pocket, bend them up a little, rumple them, and read the things. I mean, people who buy these books and they're like using white gloves and tweezers and immediately putting them in a plastic bag with a board and then sending them off to be put in like this plastic coffin and sealed to preserve and it's been officially graded and... Uh, that's I appreciate that a comic book is supposed to be a comic book if you want to invest get go to the stock market or something or antiques or it just turns objects into these like pristine untouchable unusable uh pieces and I don't think that's what comic books or anything really toys i mean these people who keep the toys mint in box and never open them up and never play with them that's like it's an insult to the toy for one thing i mean it, it personalize the toy for a minute it was made to be played with and enjoyed and no it's going to sit on a shelf or in a box sealed in its original like suffocating it's it's oh i don't know that's just crazy to me and uh uh, again if you've got comments there's plenty of places you can do it uh if you're listening on the overnight scape at onsug.com uh along with the other incredible shows that are there um you can comment right on the post and uh, i will certainly read it and possibly probably even uh address it right here on this appreciator program or uh, i am also posting these on youtube and again the comment i i want to hear what you think even if you think i am the most redundant terrible hypocritical i say i'm appreciating and here i am complaining about this that or the other um yeah go ahead and and if there's something i do that you like like ann she liked jimbo and she's going to get Jimbo. The email address is, in case you want to reach me that way, kpqr.torc at gmail.com. Repeating, kpqr.torc at gmail.com. And as I said, tune in next time because I can tell you right now, it's going to be a Jimbo Bonanza uh, and 
Who knows what else we will talk about. Maybe Jimbo will uh, touch on some topics that will be fun to bounce around. Because he was good. He used to have his yellow pad and he would make a list of topics and uh, would just go through them. And sometimes we would do that together on programs. So all this and more forthcoming on the next Appreciator. And meanwhile... Set the controls for the heart of the fun.